we're now moving on to the chain rule homework questions. Now for uh, example number one, uh, the question gives you a bunch of uh, weird instructions here. Uh, but basically, uh, I, want you to, I want you to ignore the instructions and, and just find the derivative. So when you're learning the train rule, you can definitely do a bunch of other composite rules here. But let's just go ahead and just find the derivative and we should be fine for example number one. Okay, so for example number one, uh, if I want to find the derivative, uh, I notice that there's a power of 5 here. So using the chain rule and power rule, uh, the 5 would come to the front. So this would be a 2x squared minus 3x to the power of 4. So that's the power rule there. And then the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of that inside, inside function will be 4x minus 3. Close the bracket. And that's it finished. Moving on to uh, question number two, if I want to find the derivative, uh, what I'll do first is I will rewrite the radical in terms of a power. And if I rewrite that in terms of a power, I get uh, x squared minus 2x all to the power of 1 half. All right, so let's go ahead and find the derivative. So uh, y prime equals. Uh, the two can just uh, hang along or tag along. And, and then once if we apply the power rule, the 1 half here comes to the front. And we would write out the uh, x squared minus 2x. And then the power rule states that you need to subtract 1 for the power. So this would be uh, negative 1 half. And then the uh, chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside guy. And that's going to be 2x minus 2. Now, although this is uh, an acceptable answer, I would go ahead and try to simplify this. So uh, this blue 2 and this red 2, they cancel off. Uh, this uh, 2x minus 2, that could just uh, move to the front, and uh, that would be 2x minus 2, all divided by, now this is, a, this is a negative 1 half, so that means you have a square root on the bottom, x squared minus 2x, uh, so that would be, uh, this would be a, you know, a better simplified answer if you would like. Alright, let's move on to question number 3 here. So for question number 3, I am finding the derivative again. Uh, for this problem, I would rewrite this as 3 times. Now, the denominator has a radical, so we're just going to move that to the top. And if I move that to the top, I would just write the power as negative 1 half. All right, so we can move the radical to the numerator by raising everything to the power of negative 1 half. And once we do that, then taking the derivative is much easier. The constant just uh, stays in front. Uh, this negative 1 half, that comes to the front here, so be, that will be negative 1 half. And uh, the 4 minus x remains the same. And then the power rule states that I need a minus 1 for the power. So this will be negative 3 over 2. And then the chain rule states that I need to take the derivative of 4 minus x. And the derivative of that is just negative 1. Okay, so uh, although this is uh, an acceptable answer, we do need to go ahead and clean this up. So in order to clean this up, uh, there's a minus sign and a minus sign there, so the, so the minus signs just cancel out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a line right here because uh, this part here in blue, uh, we can just move that to the bottom for now. So this is 4 minus x. So instead of saying negative 3 over 2, I can say positive 3 over 2 for the power. And uh, this uh, 3 right here can uh, move to the top here, so that's the 3 there. And uh, this 2 can uh, just move up to the bottom here as a single 2 like that. So y prime would equal to this. All right, so this 2 right there is that 2 right there. Uh, this 3 is that 3 right there. And I'm going to do one more thing here. So y prime would equal to 3 over. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can read this correctly or not, but that's 2 times 4 minus x to the power of 3 over 2. And if you want to write the bottom as a radical, uh, you could write a square root sign. And uh, the 4 minus x is all being raised to the power of 3. So uh, this is an acceptable answer. And this is also another acceptable answer as well for question number 3. We're now moving on to example number 5. And for example number 5, I need to continue to continue to find the derivative for the following problems. Uh, so if I want to find the derivative for the next problem, I can start off by writing y prime. All right, there's a 13 here. So that power will move to the front uh, for the power rule. So that's going to be 13. And then uh, I can copy this out, 2x squared minus 1. And 13 now becomes 
12 because the power rule states that I need a minus 1 from the power. And then the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside guy. So the derivative of the inside guy there in green is 4x, and uh, that's it. So, so there's your final answer for that one. Okay, let's move on to uh, question number two here. And for question number two, um, before I do this problem, I'm going to rewrite my radical in terms of a power. So this is going to be 3x squared minus x to the 1 half, all to the power of 4. All right, so let's go ahead and take the derivative now. So uh, this 4 right here, that will come up to the front for the power rule. And then the uh, 3x squared minus x to the 1 half, that remains the same. Now the power, I need a minus 1. So 4 minus 1 will be 3. And now the uh, chain rule states that I need to take the derivative of that inside guy. So if I take the derivative of the inside there, that's going to be 6x minus... Now there's a 1 half here, so the 1 half would just come in front. So 1 half x to the power of negative 1 half. And I can close the bracket off like that. Now although, once again, this is uh, an acceptable answer, but you should also try your very best to maybe uh, just clean up the answer by writing everything back into the radical form. So this is going to be 3x squared minus. So x to the 1 half, that's gonna, that will be uh, root x, close bracket to the power of 3. And then, and then and then I'll open up the six, sorry, I'll open up the bracket, write out six x minus. So uh, this negative one half here means um, there has to be a radical on the bottom there. And then um, this two here, I can just park that right there. And uh, now I can close the bracket there and that would be um, a better answer, I guess. So uh, this part here in yellow here, x to the power of negative one half, that's this guy right there. And uh, this 2 is this blue 2 right there. So you should be very comfortable with changing radicals to powers and powers back to radicals for this course. Okay, let's move on to some more problems here. Um, I guess question number uh, 3 will be next. Okay, so uh, I need to take the derivative for question number 3 here. And uh, I notice that there's a, a power here. So if I go ahead and take the derivative, I'll, I will start off by writing y prime equals. Now this is a constant. The constant, you don't really have to do anything with that. It just tags along. And now the 6 comes to the front. So it'll be 6 times uh, the bracket. So it'll be uh, x squared uh, plus 4x minus 1, close bracket. And then I minus 1 from the power, and then, and then I have a 5 there. And then the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside term. So that will be 2x plus 4. And uh, the last thing I'll do is uh, I will just times the 5 and 6 together. And I'll just take one more line to simplify that. So that's, that's going to be 30 times x squared plus 4x minus 1 to the power of 5 times 2x plus 4. And uh, that's, that's an acceptable answer for that question. All right, with question number four, um, I have a radical. Um, I have a radical in this problem, so the cube root of all that. So anytime you have uh, radicals, uh, I, I recommend that you write the radical in terms of a power. So I have bracket x squared minus 1 squared. And then all of that is being raised to the power of 1 third. All right, so let's go ahead and take the derivative now. If I want to take the derivative, I start off by writing y prime equals, and uh, this one third right here, that will come up to the front, so that's, that's going to be one third. Um, I'll put a square bracket and then an open bracket, x squared minus 1 to the power 2. Close that bracket off, and then I need a minus 1 here. Now, I, I do need a minus 1, but minusing 1 is the same thing as minusing 2 over 2. So if I do that, or sorry, minusing a 3 over 3, I think that would work better for, uh, for this problem. So if I do 1 third minus 3 over 3, that's going to be negative 2 thirds. All right, so um, if I continue on here, this is going to be um, negative 2 thirds. And then the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside function there. So um, if I bring uh, this 2 inside, that would be 2 bracket x squared minus 1 to the power of 1. And then you just take the derivative of that guy, which will be 2x. 
Okay, so um, with this kind of problem, I think the method that, that I showed you there was actually quite complicated. And although you can use this as an, uh, an, uh, as an answer here, um, I'm going to redo this problem and show you guys a quicker way of doing this. Uh, I do apologize for maybe showing you the long step first, but um, the longer way actually takes a bit of time. Okay, so um, if I redid this problem, uh, just being a little bit faster this time, I would rewrite this as x squared minus 1 to the power 2. And then I would still have the uh, 1 third out there, but I would actually use one of the, your uh, grade 9 rules and just multiply the exponents first. And if you do that, you would get x squared minus 1 to the power of 2 thirds. And if you write the problem out like that right from the get-go, which I didn't do the first time, I, I believe the derivative, finding the derivative would be a lot easier. Uh, the two-thirds would come out in front, and then this would be uh, x squared minus one, and then I would minus uh, three over three on the power there, and if I did that, I would get negative uh, one-third. And then the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside term, which would be two x, like that. Um, and in my opinion, this is a lot easier to simplify than the example that I did, sorry, the solution I, that I showed you the first time because this two and this two, if I multiply those together, I get four X. Uh, the three goes on the bottom here. And uh, this part here that I'm highlighting in blue, uh, we can just put that on the, on the denominator as the cube root of X squared minus one. And, um, yeah, that should be your final answer. Or if you just want to write 4x over 3 uh, bracket x squared minus 1 to the power of 1 third, I mean, that's the same thing, right? So uh, those are acceptable answers for that question. All right, let's move on to uh, question number 5 now. All right, so for uh, question number 5, I would definitely uh, start off this question by rewriting everything in terms of a power. So this would be y equals to 4 bracket x to the power of 1 half plus x to the power of negative 1. And I will close that bracket and raise that to the power of 5. All right, now we can take the derivative now because I've written the inside terms um, with powers. So if I take this uh, 5 here and so if I take this 5 there and if I multiply it with the beginning there, uh, 4 times 5 is going to be 20. And then I would rewrite the uh, the inside again as x to the power of 1 half plus x to the power of minus 1 close the bracket all to the power of 4 and then the um, chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside term so uh, that would be 1 half x to the power of negative 1 half and then this minus 1 would come out in front so that would be minus 1 x to the power of negative 2 and then I would close the bracket now, once again, uh, this is a, technically an acceptable answer, but I will go ahead and now just clean up um, the uh, powers that have um, you know, a fraction or a negative power, and I will just change those uh, back into radicals, just be because they look nicer as radicals, I guess. So uh, this will be root x plus, now this will be one over x, all to the power of four. So don't forget that this guy right here, I can write as just one over x bracket, uh, this is going to be uh, 1 over 2 root x. Okay, so if I just get rid of the yellow color here, um, this 2 right here is that 2 right there, and uh, this x to the 1 half is that guy right there. All right, and then the last term would be minus uh, 1 over x squared, close the bracket, and um, yeah, I think that should be it. All right, let's move on to uh, question uh, number seven now. Oh, sorry, not number seven, number six, sorry, number six. Okay, so question number six. Um, now with uh, question number uh, six, I guess you can do um, some fancy things to kind of get this problem started here, but uh, because you have a one on the numerator, uh, technically you could write this as y equals to bracket x squared plus, I'll say x to the power of 1 half, close bracket, but I can write this as all of that to the power of negative 1. 
So that works really well if your numerator is one and you have a few terms on your denominator. If I write my expression like that, then uh, finding the derivative is a little bit easier. So uh, using the power rule, uh, the negative one would come out in front. So uh, negative one and then bracket, whoops, let me just uh, erase all that again, sorry. So uh, the negative one would come on front and then uh, the bracket x squared plus x to the one half all to the power of, well, I got minus another one there, so that's gonna be negative two. And then the power rule states that I need to find the derivative of the inside guy, and that's gonna be two x plus one half x to the negative one half, close the bracket. All right, and then after that, um, I mean, I guess we could leave our answer like that, or we can try to simplify this. Um, there's a negative two there, so uh, that's gonna be one over x squared plus root x to the power of two. And uh, then there, there's my sign here, I guess I can just transfer that down there. So uh, this whole uh, expression there is just this guy right there. And uh, for the next part here, I mean, there's not much you can really uh, do to simplify that. That's gonna be two x plus one over two root x, close the bracket. Once again, uh, this two is that two right there and uh, this x to the one half is this guy right there. All right, so hopefully that, uh, hopefully that helps and um, that is your final answer for question number six. Okay, moving on to question number uh, seven. I guess there's two more questions, seven and eight for this section. All right, for question number seven, uh, we can start off with the power rule. So uh, y prime equals, all right, the four would come out to the front so the four, sorry, they come out to the front here. So the four would be written out like that. And then you would go ahead and copy out the rest of uh, the problem here. Uh, plus four, close the bracket. And now we need a minus one from the power. So four minus one will be three. And then the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the, of the inside term. So if I do that, um, the three would come out in front first. So three uh, times Okay, I'm just gonna put the a black color here. So this would be uh, x squared plus x, close bracket. And uh, if I minus one from three, I get two. And then I need to take the derivative of the inside term here. So the, the derivative of that would be two x plus one, close the bracket. And uh, let me just erase that. And I guess I'll finish off the problem by putting one last bracket here, and, and that's your final answer for question number seven. Okay, let's move on to uh, question number eight. All right, so I think question number eight is similar to question number, sorry, question number eight is similar to question number uh, seven because uh, you can start off the derivative by bringing the five to the front. So uh, y prime would equal to five. And then we would copy out the original problem all over again. So x squared plus x to the power of three plus four x. And then I would close the bracket here and that would be raised to the power of four now. And then the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside terms. So here's the three. So um, the three would come out in front and then uh, this would be x squared plus x to the power of two. And then if I continue with the uh, chain rule, the derivative of this guy would be two x plus one. And then finally there's a plus four x at the end here. So the, deriv the derivative of four x is just four. And then I can finish off the problem by closing the bracket there. All right, we're now moving on to uh, the derivative problems on uh, example number six. And um, okay, let's go ahead and find the derivative for this function. So uh, just like the, uh, we had a previous problem similar to this one, there's a one on the numerator. So if you have a one on the numerator, uh, you can rewrite this as two minus three X all to the power of negative four. And once you write the problem out like that, finding the derivative is a bit easier because you can use the power rule right away. So the, so the negative four comes out in front. Then you copy out the rest of the problem. You minus one on the, um, on the power here. So this will become negative five. And then you need to find the derivative of the inside term. And the derivative of the inside term is gonna be negative three. 
And um, after you're done that, then I guess you can uh, multiply the negative four and the negative three. So negative four times negative three is 12. And then the, uh, the two minus three X to the power of five on the denominator, and that's your derivative. And that should do it for that question there. Okay, let's move on to uh, problem number three, which is the next uh, question in the homework. So for this question, we're gonna be using the product rule to start. So I wanna find the derivative of that yellow expression, and then um, I'm gonna times it by the blue expression, and then the product rule says you gotta add it to the derivative of the blue expression times the yellow expression. So uh, yeah, definitely a lot there. So let's just go ahead and do this slowly. So let's just start off by finding the derivative of this yellow expression, which will be uh, uh, three times three is nine. So nine X to the power of two close the bracket and then I can copy out the rest of the problem here and I will try to change I will try to change colors with that and give you a 2x plus 3 to the power of 4 plus uh, and then you got to find uh, the derivative of the second term so uh, using the power rule the 4 would come out in front then I would copy out the the problem like this and then the power would go down by 1 so uh, I need a 3 there and then the chain rule states that I need to find the derivative of the inside guy, which is uh, two. And then I need to times it by the, uh, the yellow expression, which is three uh, X cubed. Okay, so uh, yeah, definitely a lot there. And um, I mean, I guess the only thing that we could really simplify now is we could just multiply these guys together. And uh, that would probably help in terms of uh, finishing off the problem there. So let me just uh, copy all this out again. 2x plus 3 all to the power of 4 plus, um, so 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 3 would be 24. So 24x cubed. And then I can write out the blue expression as 2x plus 3 all to the power of 3. All right, so that's it for question number 3. Uh, let's move on to uh, question number 5. All right, so question number 5, some more product rules. Uh, combined with chain rules and power rules. So uh, I'll, I'll use these colors to kind of set the problem up initially. So the uh, product rule states that you need to take the derivative of the yellow expression first. So if I do that, uh, the three would come out in front. So it'd be three uh, times the original expression, which is two X plus one, close bracket, all to the power of two. Actually, sorry, let me just uh, put that in a red color there power of two and then I need to take I need to take the derivative of the inside guy and the derivative of that is just simply going to be two and then I copy out um, the second term which is going to be uh, 3x minus 4 all to the power of 5 all right and after I do that I need to have a, a plus sign for the uh, product rule and um, now I need to take the derivative of the second term there so if I take the derivative of the second term uh, the five would come out in front, so the five comes up. Sorry, the five comes up to the front like that. Then I copy out the three x minus four. Then the power uh, goes down by one, so that'll be power to the power of four. And then you take the derivative of the inside guy, and the derivative of the, of the inside guy is going to be three. And then you times the original or the first term, which is two uh, x plus one all to the power of three. And um, I'm not going to really simplify this problem any further. I mean, you could definitely like times the, the, the 3 and the 2 and the 5 and the 3, but I will let you do that. This is acceptable. This is an acceptable answer for a test or quiz uh, in my course. All right, let's go on to question number 6. Uh, a very similar problem here. So I think we've done enough of these to kind of have a feel of how the problems work. So uh, I'm just going to color code these, and I will just go ahead and just jump right into, into the derivative now. So the four comes out in front. So this would be four times two minus five X all to the power of three. And then the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside guy, which would be negative five, close the bracket. And then you need to write out the uh, second term in full, three X squared plus one to the power of three. And then you need a plus sign because the product rule says you gotta take the derivative of each terms eventually. So now you take the derivative of the second term, which will be three times three X squared plus one, all to the power of two. Then you take the derivative of the inside guy, which is the chain rule, which is six X. And then you would copy out the, uh, 
the yellow term there to finish off the problem. This would be 2 minus 5x all to the power of 4. So uh, that problem is kind of nice because you can just do a one-liner and um, I'm not going to simplify that problem any further. All right, let's move on to question number seven here. So uh, for question number seven, I need to use the, I need to use the quotient rule and, uh, and then there's gonna be some power rules and some chain rules all tied in together here. All right, so the quotient rule states that you start off by writing out the bottom term. So the bottom term is two X plus one all to the power of three. And then you need to take the derivative of the numerator. So the derivative of the numerator would be two times x plus one all to the power of one. And then the derivative of the inside guy according to the chain rule, uh, well, the derivative of x plus one is just gonna be one. And uh, then you're done with that term. And then the chain rule states that you need to have a minus sign and then uh, the numerator, um, you, need to write, you need to write that out as x plus 1 to the power 2, and then you take the derivative of the denominator. So if I take the derivative of the denominator, the 3 would come out in front, then I would write out the original term, which is 2x plus 1, all to the power 2, because the power rule states that you need minus 1 from the power, and then take the derivative of the inside guy, which is simply going to be 2. Okay, so now I'm gonna erase all that, and then the quotient rule states that I need to divide everything by the denominator all squared, and when I'm squaring it, you're just taking the powers and you're multiplying it by two, so three times two is gonna be six. So let me just erase that and just write a six here, and then that should, be, that should do for that problem. Don't worry about simplifying this. Uh, this is good enough. This is considered full marks in my course. It looks ugly, but hey, that's fine with derivatives when we're learning it for the first time. Okay, so I'm gonna finish off part one of the chain rule uh, homework video guide by finishing off example number seven. And for example number seven, we're dealing with uh, problems that have the uh, square root symbol. So we're gonna start off by writing these guys in terms of their powers. So this will be to the power of one half. All right, let's go, and fi let's go ahead and find the derivative now. So the one half would come out to the front. So this would be a one half times x squared minus four x all to the power of, well, I need a minus one from the power here based on the power rule. So one half minus two over two is gonna be a negative one half. And then you wanna take the derivative of the inside term which is uh, x squared minus 4x. So uh, that's gonna be a 2x minus four. Now, although that's the correct answer, uh, let's definitely uh, just simplify this. Um, let's go ahead and move the, um, the 2x minus four in front, all divided by two times the square root of x squared minus four x. All right, so this two right here is that two right there. And uh, this whole thing being raised to the power of negative one half, that's this thing right there. All right, let's move on to uh, question number two. All right, so just like uh, in the previous problem, we wanna rewrite this in terms of a power. So four minus x squared all to the power of one half. Let's go ahead and take the derivative. Uh, now the power would come out in front here, so this would be one half uh, times four minus x squared. And if I minus uh, one on the numerator there, uh, I would get uh, negative one half. So it's right, negative one half. And then I need to take the derivative of the inside term because that's the rule, of, that's the chain rule there. So that would be negative two x, close the bracket. Uh, if I simplify this, uh, this two and that two will cancel off. So now I have negative x on the numerator and the square root of four minus x squared on the denominator. Uh, this, sorry. Uh, this x is that x there. Uh, this minus sign is that minus sign right there. And uh, this part here in green is uh, the, the denominator on the bottom there. Okay, so hopefully that is correct. Let's move on to the next two questions where um, they're a bit harder because um, it's a square root within a square root now. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this problem is um, for question three here, we're gonna attack the problem from the inside first. 
So uh, this root x there, you want to write that as x to the power of 1 half. And then you want to work your way outwards. So here's a plus sign, so let's put the plus sign, let's put the plus sign there. Then I have an x here, so let's write the x there. And all of that is being raised to the power of 1 half. All right, so that's how you can write the uh, problem as power of 1 half, sorry, in terms of its powers. And once you have everything in terms of its power, let's go ahead and find the derivative. Okay, so uh, using the power rule, the 1 half would come out in front, so 1 half. And then uh, you would write out the inside term as x plus x to the 1 half, close the bracket. And then if I minus uh, 1 on the power there, I would get negative 1 half there. And then the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside term there. So the derivative of x plus x to the 1 half would be 1 plus 1 half x to the power of negative 1 half. Okay, so the good news is uh, that is considered to be a correct answer with, worth full points. Um, but if you do want to go ahead and simplify this, we can. Uh, let's go ahead and start with this part here in yellow. So because that part's being raised to the power of negative 1 half, that would be 1 over the square root of x plus. And then you have another x to the power of 1 half. So that would be root x on the, on the bottom there. And then the two can just uh, hang out in front. So uh, this two is that two right there. And this one half thing, I mean, that's all of this there, right? And uh, this part here in green is that part right there in green. Okay, so a little bit of work there. Uh, the good news is the second part is way easier. This will be one plus one over two root x. And we've seen this a few times in this video where this two is that two and uh, this x, this x to negative one half is all of this green stuff right there. Okay, let's, uh, that's it for that problem. Uh, let's move on to question number four now. Last problem for this uh, video. Uh, once again, for this question, I would start with, I would start off by attacking the middle term there or that inside term there. So that would be x squared plus x all to the power of one half. And then there's a plus sign. So the plus sign comes out like that. And then there's this x squared term, so that would be x squared in blue. And then uh, we're gonna raise everything because it's all under the, it's all under this root sign. So we're gonna put a one half at the very top there, and that's how I can rewrite the problem in terms of a power. All right, let's go ahead now take the derivative. Okay, so that means the one half comes out in front now. So that'll be that's gonna be one half times the inside which is x squared and I, I'm not going to change colors here because I'm a little bit lazy now to the power of one half but close this bracket and then I need a minus um, 2 over 2 on that power there because 2 over 2 is 1 and that's going to be negative one half alright and then the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of this inside term all right, so you got to be very careful, very careful with that. So the first term here, x squared, that's going to be 2x plus. All right, there's a 1 half here. So the 1 half comes out in front. So that's going to be 1 half times x squared plus x to the power of negative 1 half. And then finally, the chain rule states that you need to take the derivative of the inside guy, which will be uh, 2x plus 1. Close the bracket. And then I need one last bracket at the very end to uh, finish everything off. Okay, so a lot of work there. I mean, do we need to clean this up and simplify it? I mean, we could, but uh, it's a lot of work. Once again, this part here in yellow, because that because that whole yellow thing is being raised to the power of negative one half, it has to be it has to be written as one over the square root, and then you can start putting everything in here. X squared plus. And then this guy right here is really the square root of x squared plus x. And then this two right here just parks on the outside like that. And then uh, if I go ahead and simplify um, the second half of the problem, it would be uh, 2x plus. And uh, this part right here that I'm highlighting there in blue, I mean, that's going to be 1 over the square root of x squared plus x. And then uh, this 2 right here can be parked there. And then uh, this uh, 2x plus 1, I mean, I guess that can be, that can all multiply with the 1. So um, 
maybe you can just finish off by running it like that and then uh, that should that should do it I believe yeah that should do it and then close the bracket off and uh, that's it alright so that concludes uh, this video on the chain rule which is part one we'll do part two later